Welcome back to the Arizona Daily Mix. Joining us is Dr. Middle of the Dignity Health Norton Thoracic Institute. Talk to us about GERD. Welcome, doctor. How are you? Thank you. Thank so, you for having me here. Let's explain what GERD is. So GERD is gastroesophageal reflux disease, meaning contents from the stomach, which is the gastric, refluxes back into the esophagus, causing disease. Most commonly, it is used with the term as acid reflux disease, but I think that's a misnomer because a lot more than just the acid, but the food and the bile and stuff can come up. Yeah. So the correct name is gastroesophageal reflux disease. Got it. Before we get into it, let's talk about the Norton Thoracic Institute because it's a whole group of people that take care yes. of, right? Yeah. So Norton Thoracic Institute is a group of thoracic surgeons and pulmonologists. We have a big focus and a national presence on lung transplant program. We are one of the busiest programs in the country. And we have a special interest in uh, all types of thoracic diseases, which are pulmonary and lung cancer diseases, and then esophageal diseases, which includes reflux, swallowing issues, esophageal cancer, and so forth. Okay. Now, let's talk about how this all works, because we were talking before we came in here yeah. about that, we'll just say our body's like a home. Yeah. And so with this type of uh, disease, what happens here? So uh, let me just tell you is that, you know, the pressure in your belly, just to like to explain it to like a high schooler who knows basic physics, the pressure in your belly is always more than the pressure in your chest where the esophagus lies. So the fluid inside the stomach has a normal tendency to be pushed back up into the esophagus. But that doesn't happen in everybody normally because there is a high pressure valve that prevents the reflux. So imagine it like a valve in your basement. The sewage doesn't back up in your basement. But if the valve is weak, it's not working, either temporarily or permanently, the sewage backs up in your basement. Think of that as liquid coming back from the stomach into the esophagus. And now the first thing you notice when liquid backs up in your basement is it stinks. And that would be the heartburn that we feel. But if the liquid is coming up so much, it goes all the way to your first floor, and that's where it is a regurgitation coming up. It can spoil your furniture that's coughing and choking at night. And more worrisome, if you have damaged your basement floor because of sewage coming up, and that would be damage to the esophagus, which could be precancerous lesion, such as Barrett's esophagus or even esophageal cancer in a very small number of people. So who do we see at risk with this? Who, who would actually be in the contingent to, to get this type of disease? So gastroesophageal reflux disease is very lifestyle related. It's actually very, very common. Almost 30 to 40% of adults may report some symptoms of uh, reflux disease on a weekly or biweekly basis. And almost 20% of adults are taking medicines on a regular basis for reflux disease. So it's very common. But if you are overweight, and uh, you uh, eat late at night, and you eat too fast, then you are at a bigger risk of developing gastroesophageal reflux disease. Progression to cancer is very small but real, and it is higher, it is more in Caucasians, in the male, in males, and in people who are overweight yeah. or if they smoke. Yeah. Okay, I, you know, we, I wish we could spend more time here, but as we're going through, let's talk a couple of symptoms people need to look out for uh, for this. So the most cardinal symptom and the most common symptom is heartburn. A lot of people have experienced heartburn after a bigger meal or a few few drinks in the night. Basically, it's a burning sensation that rises in the, in the low chest and is radiates upwards and is usually after a bigger meal or at night. So that's the most common symptom, but that's by far is not the only symptom. The second most common symptom is a feeling of a liquid coming up, which is regurgitation. Some people may call it have associated with a bitter taste in your mouth or waking up with liquid in your throat. And this can then worsen into having hoarseness because the sewage, the liquid coming up is basically spoiling your lungs or your vocal cords. So hoarseness, chronic cough, sometimes chest pain, it can be indistinguishable from a cardiac chest pain, which we need to rule out first. Right. So heartburn, regurgitation, hoarseness, cough, and very occasionally swallowing problems. Okay, and then how do you take care of it? So the first thing is to recognize that you have a problem. Now, occasional heartburn after one night out with friends or a bigger meal, that's okay, you can take an antacid. But if that's happening on a regular basis, then you probably should discuss it with your physician. A lot of patients right now self 
start the medications based on TV ads. You see all of them and start the acid suppression medicines, but usually it is not good to continue them without medical supervision for more than one to two weeks. Talk to your physician about the first management of symptoms is by giving strong acid suppression medicines, but uh, they, may, they are very good medicines. They take care of heartburn very well, but they do not stop reflux. Right. If you need to be on medicines to control your symptoms, you should discuss with your physician about possibility of other interventions to stop reflux rather than just um, just take care of the symptom. Yeah, and then they come yeah. see you and you take care of everything. So we take care of everything, but you know, again, people need to understand that this is a lifestyle related uh, disease. It'll be good to all of us to probably drop a few pounds, especially if you're overweight, uh, not eat late at night, and keep the head of the bed up. Besides these three factors, nothing else stops the number of reflux episodes. The other common misconception people have is that, that certain type of foods cause more reflux. Actually, a food sensitivity is noted in only about uh, that a particular food such as mint or yeah. tomatoes or onions, uh, the patient, only about 20% of patients have sensitivity, sensitivity to causing that symptom. So if you're not sensitive to a, to a food that's causing a symptom, don't worry about avoiding it just because the book says so. Yeah. Go see a physician, we'll do an evaluation, and might best be to continue long-term medication. However, you have to be aware that we still have an underlying weakness of the sphincter that can continue to cause problems, damage to your esophagus. A person with more than five year history of reflux disease should get an endoscopy uh -huh. to make sure there is not permanent damage to the esophagus or precancerous lesions and really discuss with your physician or the surgeon that what quality of life would you like rather than taking a medicine for the rest of your life and more importantly don't ignore the other symptoms which are you know coughing waking up at night yeah. or things like that yeah. a lot of people have bad sleep at night because of reflux wow amazing doctors yeah. so much to learn there we appreciate you coming yeah. in we have information on aztv.com on how you can get a hold of the dignity health Norton Thoracic Institute right. yeah. um, or other Dignity Health programs uh, they have there for you.